among in everybody. I welcome all of you and I greet all of you in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I welcome all of you in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. I pray that you all had a blessed day and that God has been gracious, good, and faithful to all of you. As for me, I'm telling you, He has been good, faithful, and gracious. It has been a busy day, but no matter what we are going to get to do the work of God. We are going to get to do the good news. And by the way, brothers and sisters, these girls that we are reporting my account on TikTok, I think the Jezebel host, let me insult them. That's the first greeting I'm giving you haters on TikTok. I am live again. Your, your boss with TikTok is not Jesus. You go get me blocked <laughs> 24 hours. They go and block me back because you know why? <laughs> now the master has a way for, he don't work with past particular thing. He's a way with fire. He's the greater, he, the scatter of power. So to all of you, my haters on TikTok, you children of Satan, I want you to know that I got you and you go drink your own children's blood. I eat their flesh like barbecue in Jesus' name. Let me just declare a scripture before we start. Let's get started, my brothers and sisters. And to all of you on TikTok, this goes to all the, the uh, how you call them, the perverts of hell who are reporting my account because they don't like the topic of makeup and all of that. The Lord said, if you don't like something, you can just keep quiet. You cannot stop telling me. And the thing is that you don't like me to talk truth. Uh, hmm. But the Lord said, we shall see who the Lord is supporting. The ones that are fighting with me, I leave you to the Lord. Let the Lord deal with you. You don't fight with me. You can fight with me. Your mother and your father, they are too small for the master that I say. So I can just say they are too small for me. I want to put it lower because today we are having live contacts. Praise the Lord, everybody. I greet all of you. I will come all of you in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Today be a blessed day. I will come with you in Jesus' name, the Son of the Living God. I pray that you are all well, well, and you are ready for the message. They fight, make up, and wins. Slash dressing up. Yesterday we talked about AI. Today we are going to go deep in dressing up. Sister Sharon, Sister Karen, Apostle One, come in, my sisters, because today I want to demonstrate to show the women how we are looking in church. Because tokam is not enough. I could put on those ashao clothes that I used to wear before I met Jesus. There was no conscience. There was no fear of God. So I didn't mind to put my body out like it's a sexual suggestion or a dramation. I will not put makeup and wig because I do not want to use those things for a demonstration. But my body is the temple of the Lord, so I can use that. You get it? I'm not going to put Jezebel or lipstick to show. Mm -mm. But you're going to get the demo and we're going to put it into our own face so we can see how we are looking like. This is not women of the world, but women of God. People that have received Jesus as their personal Lord and said, people who have said, I've given up to self so that I can carry the cross. And I'm going to go by scripture about dressing up. Today we are sticking to dressing up the most because it is one big problem in the body of Christ when it comes to us women. But also, hmm? Also, men, it be a shame. I'm tired of men dressing up like women. I'm tired of people at church dressing up like women. And I'm tired of all men of God wearing a suit because a suit was for the corporate world with the children of the world, the, the children of the Lord, I mean. We were wearing sackcloth. Our own is sackcloth. It is holy garment that is bestowed, installed, and imparted by God, not by the fashion we wear. And when I go to the Bible, I want to take it to scripture. When I read Isaiah 47, 2 verse 3, it says, take the milestones and grind flour, put off your veil, strip off your robe, and cover your legs, pass through the rivers. Your nakedness shall be uncovered, and your disgrace shall be seen. I will take vengeance, and I will spare no one. This is for us women. We are not dressing up like human beings in church. John 3 verse 33, whoever receives his testimony sets his seal to this that God is true. God is true. Makeup st stops being existent in your life. God is true. There are greater things. Because that same God tells you makeup equals to estate. 
Yes, makeup equals to estate. People are not born rich. Not everybody is born rich. Some came from a poor mother that used to sell puff puff on the road. Do you know why they became great? Their mother saved with that puff puff money. People are sending children to university. You are putting makeup and dressing up. What kind of dress up is in church right now? I'm going to put on something while I preach about this scripture that we just read in Isaiah. Sister Sharon, be writing the scripture. Praise the Lord. You see, they're not even blocking you today, Sharon. The Lord, he said, he has opened way. They shall have some places where they want to block us. But we have the leeway. Just keep driving forward, sis. Put gas. Sunka. Sunka. I'm going to give you one minute. I want to show you how we are looking at the church. At the court. I said at the court. Just give me one minute there. I want to show my sisters who are so-called daughters of God how they are looking at the water. It's embarrassing. It's shameful. It's disgraceful. It's nasty. And it's wrong. And it does not show who God is. Because if you received God, you are not of this world. You are in this world. Sister, wait up. Give me one minute. Sister, you dress like a woman of the world. You, you act like a woman of the world. You do everything like the Kim Kardashian. You sit in vagina, detoxic, uh, how you say it, steam you. Mm. You live like the women of the world. So stop judging these women of the world. Wait, today, not today. <laughs> Oh, Lord, Jesus, at the level I will go for your gospel. They will call me corrosive. It's okay. Didn't they call you corrupt? They did. They called you a madman. I called you something wrong with you, Lord. Are they come? Are they come? Hmm. And these are the people standing at the altar. Lord, oh, Jehovah, are they come? Hmm, exactly like this. If I lie, slap my face, Holy Spirit, in this same place in my house. If I lie, slap my face. And you were expecting people who are standing at the altar. Wait till at the come. People who are standing at the altar to look like this. Wait till at the come. Baby, have you seen my extra bus? <laughs> oh my God, let's say, is it this time again? Ah, baby. This time of year? It's the time of the year, like this one. We go show them. Lipstick, then? I don't have lipstick. I said I cannot well, use my eyelashes. I already have them. They were imaginary. Since they are having them, I they can promise like... you there's no wig in this house you can wear. No, there's no wig. There's no makeup. It's gone. And these are the last oh. things that. I have to go as well. That's why the Lord is talking about dress up. That's why he reminds me. And if, the, if I can't wear this, they are willing this, to this, change. This is a yearly um, event for the next generation of 16-year-old girls. Ha, it's not 16 year old. It's not pastor wife. I'm a pastor wife right now. Apostle. Okay, sisters, I'm about to enter. And then you see the one. Hype me, hype me, hype me. We are about to welcome the woman of the Lord. Apostle Rachel Botta. Glory be to God. Let me just. <laughs> yay, 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 yay. The lower the better. Wait. Apostle Rachel Botta, welcome me. Glory be to God. These are the people standing at the altar of the church. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And you see they come. Oh, glory to God. Tonight, we're about to have a powerful, wonderful time in the presence of the Lord. You know, uh, Brother Geoffrey, can you please uh, play Waymaker? God is in our midst right now. This is how we are looking at it. God is in our midst. Let me drop it the lower, the better. Ah, the lower, the better. I want you to get the whole outfit and memo plus the shoe too. Ah. Glory be to God. What we're going to do right now is we're just going to go in spirit and we're going to sing Waymaker. Come on, ladies and gentlemen. You are here. Come on. Moving in our midst. 
Oh, I worship you. Come on, everybody, raise your hands. Oh, I worship you. Yes, Lord, you, you are here. Oh, moving in the midst. Come on, Makara, And then this is a woman of God dressed like this, and you have no shame at the altar when you're supposed to pray for people. Why do you take those extra layers? Because when I come at the altar here, I don't come for anything to cover myself. I come ready, ready for demons. In case the demon fire this side, I am ready to catch it. In case the demon fire the other side, I'm ready to catch it. You are wearing heels like this in church, and you are standing in front of other people, and you are called apostles and pastors, and you want to speak in tongues. And then when you start to pray for people, this is what made me ask the Lord, what are we supposed to look at? You are praying for people, and you are going down. The way you are going down, sisters, and those of you, this nyash, I put it extra, because what I've noticed, a lot of women in church, God has blessed you with beautiful bodies, and you have started dressing them up like little girls. This top that I'm wearing is too many of you women in church wearing this top, and you are the author, and we can see, just because we don't see your belly button, you are still naked, and then when you go down to pray for people, this is how it's looking like, and you know, when demons are going everywhere, and your ashes, they should be covering you, not covering the people going down, sorry, have I Look at how I'm bussing. Come on now. Glory be to God. We're about to take the devil out of this place. Come on. Stamp the devil. You cannot even walk. And then the funny thing is that before the sermon is finished, you say you enter fire. You enter Holy Ghost fire. Yes, when I enter in the realm of the Holy Ghost, the devil must know I'm about to come and do my business. He's God. Hello, I'm about to do it. You can't walk in heels. Don't lie. You can't walk in heels. You cannot walk in heels. The legs are tired. Your knuckles are shaking because even me have worn heels. You think I'm a fool? Your knuckles are shaking like this. You cannot stand. You are tired. Now you lie that the Holy Ghost has cut you. Come on, somebody. And then you realize that it's going everywhere. Your fake everything is showing. You are being like a like a a, a, a margarine in the in the girl's car. And then now the people that are supposed to come and cover you, they they come. I cover you. Glory be to God. When I come with the person, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You were supposed to be women of God. Yes, baby. In my back, I'm talking. You were supposed to fear God. You were supposed to represent God. What does this represent about God? If I come here as an apostle, in fact, some of you, this demonstration that I'm doing with this clothes, you are you say I look beautiful. The reverse psychology never worked on some of you. Some of you are saying, but Apostle Rachel, you look so fine. And with a top like a 12-year-old girl, like a 14-year-old, Majari. How? How? And we're supposed to be the temple and representation of God. We have no shame. We come naked in the presence of our Father. There is nothing that the men are not seeing at the altar these days. If we are not wearing something that is above the knees to show our shapes and all the fake niashes that we are carrying, and some of you, you carry big. If I have a bum like this one, what am I doing with a skate like this one? Don't I look younger than Apostle Moon? Don't I look stupid? Tell me the truth. I know I look stupid. That's why I used to wear these clothes in the world. And even in the world, I wear the skate, but the top, I thought to myself, I look like a majorine, a majorate. We about to soccer, soccer. Now, so you, you don't look up. Eh? It was not supposed to be external. You forgot how you are supposed to be a representation of God. You have become so much of the world. Everything competition snatched and the devil is lying to some of you. You do not even have the belly type to wear that kind of top. You are out there and we can see the whole nyangara, nyangara everywhere in church. And you want us to act like we don't see it. You, you, you think we are stupid. So when they say God was looking for the inside and God said, come as you are, you want to be coming out here like majorates from the pit of hell and you want us to act like we don't see it. 
20 years in Christ, Jesus has not spoken to you about your dress code. Eh? When you sit in church, look at this gate. You cannot even sit and the oh, sisters, the thigh that men are seeing in church, this. You sit like this in church. And you are so full of yourselves, especially if you are pastor wives. Let me sit high on that fake nyata. You sit so high like that. And you sit in church like that. And everybody comes to you, mama, 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 mama will be naked. All of show mama. Mama will never receive Jesus in spirit and in truth. Because didn't the Lord convict you that you are naked? You, all, you can all see, is this appropriate for me as a woman of God to come at the altar to come and, and wear? Eh? And the one that baffles me the most, where did they come? The second one. These are the representation of outfits in church. Wait, wait, are they come? <laughs> when they wear long clothes, it's not just long. I'll show you what long is. They just don't wear to mean long. Mm -mm. They wear long and tight. Long and figurate. Long and sex and array. I used to do that in the world because I had a mission. At the mission, I was attracting something in the presence of the Lord. We are trying to attract angels, like in Sodom and Gomorrah. You want to, you want to have sex with the angels or what? What's wrong, sisters? What is the mission entry? What is the reward in the end? Eh? This is this is really first ladies in the church. Yeah, Jehovah means Jehovah. The... This is first ladies in the church. This is first ladies in the church. I no lie. I've seen it. This is first ladies in the church. First ladies in the church. When they enter, it look like they are going for wedding. Where's my microphone? You know, today. God is about to do great things in our midst. And I just want all of you to be open. Let me look for fake here. Lord, what can I do? Are they gone? God is about to do great things in our midst today. So I just want all of you to be ready. You know, when God sets you apart, he hides you so that nobody will see you. And when we are going through those two trying times, I know it seems like there is no hope and there is no light at the end of the tunnel. Well, today I'm about to tell somebody, you are preaching, but the self is also preaching. I'm about to tell somebody, you see, these clothes I wear now, this shirt cost a $1 million. I never could afford that. Now this is the message of encouragement. I never thought I could afford that. But when God came in my life, one million became like nothing, you know? So before we get to go in the presence of the Lord, I just want to ask the praise team, can you please? <laughs> Jesus, I can't help myself, you know, I'm in a room for you. Can you just play anything for me? Because I want us to go deep and I want Brother Elisha, to come and stand here. Sister Sharon, can you stand on the other side? Because right now we're about to just give him all the praise, give him all the glory, and give him all the honor. Just adore him. Come on now, adore him. We adore you. It looks like it's a photo shoot. They're not praising God. Even the face they make, it's almost like, especially when they are recording, it's almost like they know that people, camera will be, we adore you, oh Lord. You, Jesus. For the Lord. Oh, come on, somebody join me. Choir, join me. For the Lord is my shepherd. Come on, somebody. Oh, I shall not be in one. Oh, he, I said, he, he lives through the valley 
knees. Oh, and the deep water. Somebody get on your knees. I just want to adore you, Lord. Oh, I just want to make it for you, Jesus. You've been amazing. Oh, yes, Lord. Come on, just let your hair down. Let everything go down. It doesn't matter. I told you this shirt is one million dollars. But on my knees for the Lord. Yeah. He helps. Brothers are sitting there. Brothers are seated there full of themselves in praise and worship. I said, God of Abraham. God of Shadrach, God of Isaac and Meshach, is this your house? And then when they want to dance, no shame, because the self has no self-control. There's no control of the Holy Spirit. Oh, I got joy, 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 Jesus, got it, joy, joy, I got joy, joy. <laughs> and you go to Cora Obi this page and Bobby Brown and to Queen B of Zambia page to go and tell them that they will burn in hell before those people burn in hell they don't know nothing about Jesus they don't know that if they do their nears like this they bring Sadashan and Cess around you sisters in church you know it and you are dressed like this and this pattern of one top and the bride showing. Tell me if I got it wrong, because this is what is happening in church. With our cheap bras, our stupid, nonsensical bras, and you're expecting to be a woman of God, and then you go there to pray for people. Come on, in the name of Jesus. Yeah? People are getting out of church, and they are worse than when they came in. Too many entities. Before you know it, that person, they begin to come to church. They are looking like village Brazilian here like me. For what? And then the worst of all of this, they have no money for food. They cannot pay their children's school fees. They cannot even plan to do things for themselves and their children that if we die, especially us who come from African countries, are you happy the way we leave our children? Didn't our parents and our foundation not teach us already? You like the way we suffer. You like the way we, we are treated like animals. You like the way people laugh at us. Hey? I'm asking you. And the woman of God who is so focused on the body before I met Jesus, these were the clothes I would wear when I go on a stage. And I knew it, that it, it, it figurates. I knew who I wanted to attract. I wanted when I stand there. I was a woman of the world. I was not married. So I was just doing everything that I want to do. Even as a married woman, I was wearing these clothes to be something. And you are in church. Some of you are ashamed to your own children. The reason why your children are called poor children is because of the decisions you make. Do you think God will give you time to dress up when he can warn you that there is hunger and poverty coming? Do you think the God of Abraham cares about how you look as long as you are not naked? And you're out here, single mothers, fool in my inbox. Apostle, I need money for business. You will not get it from here. God gave you grace, gave me grace. You play with your own grace, and when we rebuke you, you won't come and talk from your total and your stinking breath. With who? Call me mad. Anybody who insults me, your promise and your reward. I, Rachel Botta, daughter of the Lord, I decree and declare that you shall drink your own children's blood as wine, and you shall eat their flesh as barbecue, says the Lord by scripture. That is what I speak upon you, and it's not the case. Call me a mad woman. I, Rachel, both a decree and declare that your family shall know madness, and the only one who can cure it is the God of Abraham. But before he can cure it, he will ask you, where did you get this madness? 
take that wisdom. Be very careful. Give yourselves clean. If you don't like what I'm doing here, you will get angry with the person that you go vex the one that I'm doing this for. Because I know that some of you jealousy is starting to kill you. Because this body, no waist trainer, no nothing. I put cycling so that I'll not be naked. You want it. And you look like an elephant. People looking like demons of hell. That's why the Lord stings you structure. That's why the Lord stings you body. That's why your own has to be under surgery. Because you're full of yourself. You pride spirit. Take that in Jesus' name. And if it hurts, I mean it double. Share it between your father, Satan, and your mother, Jezebel. Boom, boom, in the name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. This is how they are standing out at the church. So when I come in the church looking natural, that's why they call me mad woman. If the way God created me is called mad, people need to know something about God. He will show you. Because even those ones that speak madness, do you think God wants madness for you? The Bible tells me that the, the God of Abraham, Jesus Christ does not rejoice even when you idiots from the pit of hell decide to be idiots for Satan. He don't rejoice so. His prayer and his will is for all of you to be saved. Just because your mouth is prideful and you are a poor demon and will die poor does not mean that you are anything. Shut up. He Jesus never received the message. Don't fight the messenger because this messenger, she don't petty petty. She don't fear nobody. Because let me tell you one thing. Now the Lord who called me and the Lord brought you people here. Receive the message. Women, I'm a fellow woman like you people. Just because I don't have big fake nyash like you or original does not mean that I'm a man. I am a woman, sister. I know our kata kata way. You can't tire me and you want to go away childish. It will not happen. The Lord said we shall preach about dress code in church. And if you are dressing like a prostitute like this, please, it's not my fault. I did not come here to say what I want. The Lord just sent me. Focus on the message. Don't fight the message. You know, get your children killed. Wake up tomorrow. They are no breeding. You can say, I'm to add bitter. No, no, no. I say, the mighty consuming fire, God. Do. Don't try me. He will shake your life. He said, for this one, my sister behave. If he told police, Polan police, they fear Jesus. When they see me, they just say, hello, hello, man of God. Hello. They, don't, keep quiet. Keep quiet. You don't see that TikTok is angry. I'm here today. They blocked me. The Lord told them, remove my daughter out of bondage. And I'm not lying here today. They go report my account again. It's not possible. No, it's possible. It's possible. Some of you are fighting what you cannot fight. Just take the message. So my sisters who are receiving the gospel of spirit and the truth, therefore is a liar. We are looking at prostitutes in church. We are looking like women who are selling sex. When we see it, everything is about this. Woman of the world, she posed like this. So everybody can see Thai and Nyash. Woman of the church, she posts exactly like that. Make everybody they see Nyash and Thai. My sisters, this message is bitter. Don't take it up with me. Take it up with the owner. But God is not happy. God is not happy. Especially with us black women. We are also helping our friends to die quick. Black woman. Have you not noticed that this AAA, how you call this make belief world, make up and fantasy world we are living in? We then make Chinese girls go and get fake nyash. We then make Muslim girls go and get fake nyash. We then make even white girls go and get fake nyash. I cannot say this direct, but I hate somebody they carry fake nyash that I know. I say God of Elijah, the person who they carry fake nyash, they look like giraffe like this. I've not seen the fake nyash when I see it. I won't, I won't look at it. Well, I say, what were you thinking? Eh? Everything that you are seeing online is what we are becoming. Even the women who have no shape like me, they want to dress like this. My brothers and sisters, which God, which God can allow his daughter to dress like this in church. And tell me he doesn't care. He doesn't care. The Bible says that having sex with somebody is not undressing them. You have sex with them spiritually. You know how many people are having sex with one another just because of dress code. Even right now, I know if I dress like this in church, who am I going to preach the gospel to? Brother James, if I dress like this, Will you receive the, the gospel?
We are all human beings. We fall short of the glory. I will never put myself in a situation where Eben takes his shirt off and Brother James takes his shirt off and I'm sitting next to them. What do you know be fire who do? The Lord has given me appetite, self-discipline, and also to know how to conduct myself and how to dress myself so that my brothers don't feel like they want to knock me. The way we dress can make somebody, right now, I've exposed a structure that a lot of people have never seen. But that's why I also put fake nyash so that we can blow it out of proportion. Hello? And you want brothers in church. Men are playing, God told me, men of the world have found out a game. If you want to have sex, the most girls that are being knocked in the world is church girls. Men of the world, my friends, they tell me that that girl you see, you see she look like a praise worshiper. Eh? She's so sweet. I've tested it. And that's why sometimes when we look at some of the women in our churches, my brothers and sisters, you want that can brother, sister Gloria have sex? Can sister Sharon, sister Sarah David have sex? Because they are so holy from the outside. Yeah. Men, bankers, most side chicks are worshippers at church. Yes, I am telling you the truth. Most girls who carry Bible, Psalms 91 is their word. The same ones are the girls that are side chicks for married men. In the day, married men. In the night, Psalms 91. He that abides blah, 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 shadow the woman. Amen. No transformation. And that's why these kind of messages, they will not preach for you. But even the people that are carrying ministries in this generation, a lot of them are also busy to self. They can't preach this message to you. Even I, before I met Jesus, do you think I could have come and told you people that make up, dressing up is demonic and it is make believe? No. No. No, you can only preach what you have been convicted about. And that's why you are coming to church. Less friends. You know why this white thing is equivalent to weave? When we are putting on these stupid wigs, when we are wearing these fake Indian wigs, it's just the same as this. You can see it's not your own. So why not just use your own shit? Because the nonsense and the stink is one and the same. Hmm? Now, woman of the Lord. Now, woman of the Lord. The last conference I came to, to UK, the daughter of the pastor was wearing this cycling alone. Let me, let me put it. Lord, if I lie, Punish me. The daughter of the pastor was wearing what we call cycling. This. The daughter of the pastor in UK. Let me take the skirt out there. The daughter of the pastor was wearing this. Like this. With a shirt up to here. And it was see-through. Sharon, if I lie, tell me. The pastor's daughter. She was the one announcing at the church at the altar the day I went to Sam. God is my witness because there was even an important Nigerian artist. We were in the same country with Ada Ide by that time. I never talked about it with the pastor, and I'm sure the pastor will see this. She will vex. No problem, ma. It's okay. God has already said, Pharaoh, let my people go. The pastor's daughter was dressed like this. This cycling you see on me. I caught Sharon on the side. I said, Sharon, come, come, come. And this, I said, this, Sharon, is this girl dressed like this? She was not the only one. Because these cyclings of these days, don't tell me nothing because I'm an apostle. I am a woman like you. Apostleship is for Jesus Christ, but I be woman like you. And that's why even when Jesus was mighty, he brought him in a human form so that he can put us to shame with our lives. The pastor's daughter was dressed like this. I'm not lying, God is my witness. And we were in church, and she was the one announcing. And she came at the altar, 
I looked at it close. I told Sharon, I said, Sharon, am I judging too much or is this wrong? Sharon and Des, they just said, eh? They looked the other side. Sharon, come here because you are my witness. Come here, Sharon. By the time I entered the conference, the pastor dressed so beautiful, she was covered, I can't lie. And that's what hurt me that you, the woman of God, you know how to dress, but to leave your daughter to show nakedness in church like that. The pastor, she was dressed long sleeved shirt, everything dressed neat. I cannot say nothing bad about that woman. But her daughter came in with the cycling like this. And this cycling is no longer a corrector. You women are dressing like this when going out. You put heels on this cycling. You women are dressing like this. And it's not women of the world. It's women of the church. You are dressing like this. I was shocked that conference in UK. Sharon knows. I said I don't want to ever chew with people like this. I don't care if they never like me. The nakedness that was in UK. The youth that are saving Jesus, they have Jesus on their mouth. These girls were all slain, body snatched, near tight, breast packeted. Before we get started, the program in church, I was looking at that young lady. I never said anything because God said, don't speak. Because he also knows the kind that we can rebuke. If God knows I can rebuke you and you are going to go deep and fight me, you don't have time. Ain't nobody got time for that. You're going to stand before my God on your own on judgment day. So ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Mm -mm -mm. Ain't nobody got time for demons. No, no. Ain't nobody got time for prostitution. Ain't nobody got time for that. You receive Jesus. I was shocked. She entered. The order, she stood there. She began to announce. She said, shall we pray? I couldn't pray. I was just looking down like that. I said, God, if somebody of the world comes in church right now, or that conference, is that the definition of Jesus? Is that really the definition of Jesus? They wear these shorts with crop tops. And they wear, wait. And they go. God, oh. God, oh, have mercy on us. God, oh. God, oh. God, oh. Have mercy on us, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come and see what the devil has done with us. Mercy, mercy, mercy. And this, these were the type of clothes that were there. And let me tell you, these girls don't wear flat sneakers, heels. You see the way my back is? Women are in church like that. The best friend to the pastor, I think she's a deaconess. She wore a dress that was open like this. But go worse. Sharon remembers that dress. The dress was open, Modupe, completely here, naked. And that's why you know that that Jezebel spirit prostitution has crept in into the church. Because even the Nigerian dresses that you are buying, you are not wearing them as authentic African clothes. You have to modify them. You have to snatch. Because if you really want that to look normal, you can wear a Nigerian boo-boo dress. No. No. You want snatch like this. My sisters, the way woman. Let me put the heels on because it's when you're going to understand what I'm trying to say. Wait, wait, wait. The way woman thinks this is life, the way they are walking in church, this is somebody who is supposed to give announcements. Today on Sunday, Brother Michael, Brother James Senior, they have a, you are looking 
head to toe. So if I dress like this, you people are going to receive Jesus. If I dress like this, now you people are going to see Jesus. Where do you see Jesus? By my toto or in between my titi and thigh? Where? Point your location. Because the way I'm dressed right now, I'm naked. Hmm? There's somebody here lying. It don't matter how you come. You lie, you perverted spirits of prostitution. Get out of here. I'm not here for prostitutes. I'm here for the daughter of the Lord. Megan, the Stallon, and Kadibi, they can dress like this with their fake meashes. No problem. It's their money make. Every time Megan do, boom, boom, boom. Now money she making. You daughter of the Lord. Hmm. Don't judge people. Yes, that's why they called me apostle. If God never chose you to be an apostle, especially a woman, don't make me look like I start rapping for you. I'm supposed to judge you, the people of the church. I'm not judging the people of the world. Go and read the Bible, you mumu, prostitute from the pit of hell. Write one more comment and go block you. You look ugly like your father said that. Shut up. Today I ain't got time for you people. I stamp on you and I choke you out in the blood of Jesus Christ. Period. I'm supposed to judge the church. Who do you think I should judge? Stop judging Beyonce and Rihanna. Beyonce and Rihanna have not taken up any cross for Jesus Christ. Stop judging anybody else. Go and judge Tasha Cobbs. Go and judge Rachel Nanyangwe. Go and judge Judy. Go and judge Mercy. Judge women that are in, in Christ if you are going to judge. So if you, in case you didn't know the Bible, the Bible says we are not supposed to judge the people of the world. That's why the people of the world, even if I meet her like this, I hug her, I don't even, I don't even let her see that she naked because she blind, she, she dead, she don't see anything. You understand? Shut up. You never know nothing, you stupid corporate from the pit of hell. But you women of the Lord, you know about Jesus. You know about Jesus. You can't know about Jesus and you're sitting in photo shoots. Like this. Mama Apostol. So that's why you think I'm a mad woman and I'm all of this and that. Because I don't come naked like your perverted spirit. But you see, that's why the Lord gave me the great ministry. Many are the men and women who want this ministry. But you cannot all be Jacob or Abraham. Sister boss lady. But it can't hurt me. And when I get up. It's one button, I block you. Who are you? You're like a side Woman of the Lord. These are the apostle wives. I see them on Facebook every Sunday after church. You look at the outfit, the pose. You have not had an encounter with Jesus. You lie. You lie. You lie. You lie. You lie, period. You lie. You want Mary, the mother of Jesus, to do that. Which God? And if people are not preaching to you about this, you are going to miss Jesus Christ. You can do all you want, but that's not the temple of God. That's your self, self, self love wannabe. That's the rubbish you live in. And that's why they made these little dresses for us. Because they knew the moment we are naked, we cannot think. We do not even know what we are doing. And when I look at the people fighting me, let people be like this. You are still poor. Sister boss lady, you can blog here on TikTok. But your mama family is still poor. They need somebody to break that generational case where people stop getting shown out of wedlock. Somebody marry, somebody build a state. The Lord used the, 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 the poor woman, the widow, her son, to build the state. Widower. And you, God has given you husband. And today I'm speaking on behalf of all the brothers in Christ who are working hard. It's better to give that money to your brothers and sisters or your mother and father. If this Jezebel spirit is going to be taking the money for Brazilian air and to fashion up for, for, for Facebook, when you die tomorrow, let me show you how stupid we are. This dress, it can die in two years. This dress is material. You can rip it apart. I can take it out and rip it apart. 
it brings nothing. It don't bring no wealth, no income, no blessing, no wisdom and no knowledge. But every money that you save to a business, a piece of land, an establishment, your children will get it back. Does it make sense now? Any woman whose children that if you die right now, even your in-laws are gonna take them and make them the little pinches of the family. They are the ones who are going to be washing other people's clothes and they are the ones who are going to be feeding other people's clothes. Do not laugh at me. I should laugh at you. Any woman who laughs at me, depression at its best, your children will be depressed by the time you die, my brother. Your children will be depressed. No health insurance, no saving insurance, no life insurance, no establishment or foundation. You are here on TikTok talking back to me. That's why I say you're a fool. Is this going to build your children's schools? Is this going to buy your children wisdom and knowledge? Is this going to elevate your families? The heels you love to wear, are they going to give your children a future? How many heels do you have? I used to be there. <laughs> That's why I'm laughing at some people here. When you call me dirty right now, it's okay. I met Jesus so I can live to be insulted and called dirty by people but I still can look at the person online here and say that I still have a couple of Louis Vuitton, Gucci and Prada lying in this house, about to be thrown out of this house. <laughs> Not selling it. Get out of here, like throw it. Sell it for what? Whatever has been taken is gonna come back in double favor. And as you are laughing, ask your friends. We are doing things for our children. <laughs> and we also don't want to marry poor families. Don't bring your poor babies because you stayed in the poor lane. And don't ever say that I'm full of myself. You love to be poor and hungry. The Lord says I will not be poor and hungry. And poor and hungry is in priority, knowledge and wisdom. Every day you wake up in the morning, the Lord gives you a chance. He gives you $1,000 every month. That $1,000, 500 euros, goes to vanity, makeup, make believe, fake hair, and a waist trainer, gym, to show off you can have a flat tummy and fake nyash. And the 500 goes to rentals and everything. I say, my God, have mercy on the children of this generation. Because at the end of the day, it's not coming back. The Chinese man took the man and he's gonna make another pair of these shoes. And another Chinese man from Bangladesh is going to start his company, go make more and more and more and more and more. And your children are suffering. Some of you, even right now, as I speak, the Lord says they want to laugh at you because the misery they are in is killing them. You didn't eat today. This internet you are using on TikTok is free Wi-Fi. It's internet of after night. After certain hours, this internet will not be there. It is the type of internet you tap in. 12 o'clock, I tap in. 1 o'clock, I tap in. You mumufu, I have wifi here. You want me to ship you some? Let's speak the truth. Let's talk the truth. They are getting my account again reported on TikTok. Let them continue. Hello? Hello? Let's talk the truth. You think I will fear now? I want you women to buy reports. Pepe will pepe you. No wonder your children are born to some of you. May God have mercy on your children. Because some girls, it's not their fault. They are born to useless, worthless mothers and fathers. When I care so much about how you look, God gave you grace. The most thing that you people cared about the most is what? Is what? Your appearance. And all the good photos when people die on TikTok and internet, Facebook, and we seeing the pictures and videos of people who died. 
Hello? Let's talk the truth. That person. Hmm? They, they used to look good. They are dead now. But their pictures are still online. Looking fat. Make up beat. Go and see the children of that child, of that woman. Yay. Yay. And I want to ask you, sisters. You expect a stepmother to love your children and do what you couldn't do? You expect a stepmother to stop putting wig on so that she can build a state for your children when you are on the earth here? You cared about your appearance. Who is the fool? And God is so angry with us women. Everything Jesus gives us in our hands. My sister, where is your hands work? Where is the blessings that God gave you? 1,000 pair of shoes. 3,000 a, a pair of earrings. 20,000 pair of, of a, a, a necklace. You don't have a job. You don't work. Your husband is the one who works. But every day, you dress up, you make up, you contour. Well, I want to tell you that's why we are still poor. And you go get angry, it's okay. You love this life more than you love your own children. What can I do? You couldn't love Jesus. You want me to force you. I beg the gospel is not by choking it down the throat of people. But we go speak it and dilute it. Go and report the account. Tomorrow again I go, come. You think I will slow my message for who? For TikTok. In fact, Lord, I declare and declare the owner of TikTok. Jesus, deal with you in Jesus' name. We go play rubbish with you. Hello. But that's why they brought you TikTok. In the night, they are so happy. You are waiting for free with you. Instead of wanting basic human rights to also have wifi in your homes, like other people, if in the war side they have wifi, why you African people don't have wifi? Because they know that you like basic nonsense and rubbish. Every little nonsense they give you on a take, wifi for free in the night. Look at how many of you are online to do what? To insult people, to do rubbish, to do this and that, to do that and that. For wifi that you, you tap in. Hmm? You are AI now. Gang, gang, gang. Lake, ice cream, sweetie, Lea. Ooh, ooh, but now so I do online. Our friends here look at our broad. They play rubbish, but look at our broad. Our broad, they have everything. These people have health care. And it's not like we cannot do it. Us is priority. Whatever you feed the most is what you get. Africans, we are backwards, that even when we are in church, we expect Jesus to give us miracle money. When God is giving you, Brother James, money every month, Brother James say, God will give me next month again. God is giving you, he's counting. January, I give you 10,000. February, I give you 20. March, I give you 40. April, I give you 10. It then reach December. You are broke. You do not even have any cent. And then that's when we go to prophets. Men of God, I'm having financial difficulties. Please speak upon my life. What is happening with my finances? Come, 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 come. I want to tell you what is happening. Eh? Even right now, your money, social media fashion and vanity, make believe what every cent that you buy, that you don't go back, it will never come back again. Africa should have never had fast food restaurants because we were never like that. But they introduced that fast food restaurant. You eat at home, you cook. And every time you are hungry, when I just show up in here, I live with the Dutch people here. They are so strict with their budget. You might think they are greedy. No, they say first pay the bills, make sure everything for the children and the family is established, leisure later on. Africans, 
continent that does not even afford leisure. Africans, we are leisuring 24 seven. Monday night in Africa, somewhere in South Africa, is happening. I, I, and these are church girls. I, I, oh, I love Jesus, but me and my friends, we just go in the club to party. That's all the devil they can afford them. Tuesday, Jokumbek is happening somewhere in Zambia. It's happening. Wednesday in Nigeria, somewhere is happening. Bugawa, oh Bugawa, let me see you. Whoa, 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 yo, yo. Here where I live, if you go in the city today, Friday, it is not even the same. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. The city is quiet. They are working. The teenagers, even the teenagers, they are working. Saturday, that's when you see the city packed. And let me tell you what they do. They budget for the money they are going to spend out. Dutch boys are responsible. At the age of 22, they have homes, cars, and everything. When they go outside, every money they spend, they tell one another, hey, we're going to spend 500, 500, 500, 500. And nobody will pass that budget. African men, when they go out with their friends, the money that was supposed to be for rent, you are a church man, a man of God. You put the money in the pocket in here. You see a sister wearing a black dress. Hey, you see you, Bulgari. Whoa, 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 whoa. Brothers. Everything. Now go give. When you meet God, don't you think, why do you think it takes away from the things of the world? It takes them away from you. These things are for the world. They benefit the people who live for the world. Not for me who lives for God. Me who lives for God, there is nothing in the presence of God that I will buy a beautiful outfit and I'll dress up with beautiful sexy heels and I'll put my hair in a ponytail like this and I'm going to show myself to Jesus and I'm going to say, Jesus, I love you. There's nothing like that. Nothing like that. Nothing like that. When I met God, he's the one who reminded me. And when I start looking at the things I'm throwing, I am sorry to my sons for not setting them up right. For being selfish. The moment I became a mother, it stopped being about me. Christ trusted me enough, even when I don't deserve, but by his goodness and his mercy. Christ trusted me enough and said, you know what? I bestow three sons on you. You have to raise them. Which means he will give me the strength, the knowledge, and the wisdom. And this God is looking at me. Every decision that I make is not about me. Life is not ours, but for God. You never know the day that you will die. It's better before you die in this life. You make sure the Bible says a wise man leaves an inheritance for his children. We are not supposed to be millionaires and rich, but God loves us to be stable and comfortable. Stable and steady fast. How many of you sisters, you don't even have a bank account? How can you save? You don't even have the vision. God will keep giving you money, but that money will never multiply if you don't apply wisdom. And nothing will not change. And that's why when Jesus came in my life, he changed my lifestyle. He removed me from all of short dresses. He reminded me, even when I dress like this, I feel ridiculous. But I know that to get this generation to understand, sometimes you have to see yourselves. You have to see ourselves, my sisters. My father did not teach me about how to set up a child, establish everything for a child. I will not do that to my own children. And that's what I fight about with my family members. And I don't care who's going to hate me and get angry with me. I will not let my children suffer. While lest I am young, healthy, alive, by the power and the grace of God, I will be able to establish something for my children. Even if it's a small one room, my children will know that our father and mother leave us this. 
And even a one room is a blessing, my sisters, a small one room piece of land. When you are a wife and your husband is the breadwinner, it passes away. That one room becomes a mansion because you cut out rent. You can live with your children in one room and you can share the same bed and you can go and get a job to provide food and be getting every day being sustained. And that house is a miracle because you don't have to pay no man no rent. You don't think like that, but you want to fight with us and they're getting even my page blocked. I want all of you when we finish to go on TikTok, go and, go and pressure a TikTok. To go and do in fact don't do nothing why am i asking people when the lord they move for me jesus you see these daughters of bar you see these jezebel daughters you see these demonic girls <laughs> i lead them to you in jesus name hello and when people come to tell you the truth you don't want to hear it but when we become widows when your father who makes the man in the family is no longer there you look so bad out here online you look so messful out here online. You look so ridiculous and stupid out here online. You put out sad stories out here, but they, where did that sad story come from? I stopped to feel sorry for people anyhow. Because there are some people that even God stopped feeling sorry for them. This person, if they get money all the time, every time they have riches, it is on vanity. And by the time they get bankrupt, the only thing left with them is a car that they are trying to show off in the neighborhood. Yeah, people looking at you that you have to beg people to put gas in your car, which was up, was up, was up, man, was up, was up, was up, man. Really, is that what God created us for? When I had an encounter with Jesus, he told me, who told you that I'm on dress code? Who told you that I even care about what they are telling you all of this? Who told you? I said, is the women online here? They laugh at me when I come out. The Lord said, let them laugh at you. Who is a foolish woman? One that will die today and leave their children on the street and one that has left something for their children. Who is a fool? Who is a fool? And that's what the Bible says. There's a time for everything. Me, I can't even laugh. But when I see a lot of you, the way you are laughing, laughing emojis, those laughs are actually putting you out, my sisters. You are the women I'm talking about. You with a lot of emojis in the comments here. It's you I'm talking about. Guilt makes people act stupid. Because if you don't have guilt, you have wisdom, sound mind to learn. But if you are guilty, you see how you are sending those emojis you are laughing. Most of you are younger than me. This message has come timely to you people. You've got time to change. Let's say if you are five years on the earth, if you change that five years, you are capable and able to give your children a piece of land. If you are dying in five years, you are capable of starting something for your boys and girls. Stop laughing. There's a time for everything, my sisters. This topic hurts so deep for me when I speak of it. Because it's not just about you. It's at the expense of your children. And you are so satisfied to have a phone and internet just because you can come online. The fact that you can find yourselves online the same as, as the moguls and the people who are living well does not make you anything. You see how the devil is a lie. He brought you to come and sit with the big boys, but you do not have the big life. God is great. He will never bring you to big boys. He go keep you in your lane. He go give you wisdom to grow. A lot of you, you want to, you want to chill with the big boys. And that's why online here, nothing affects you. But my sister, my brother, doesn't it hurt that every time you go to bed, these issues are sitting with you? And laughing at Apostle Ada, insulting her, reporting her account and doing all of these things you are doing. Doesn't take nothing from Apostle Ada. Nothing. What do you have? That's the reason why the message hates you. Yes. And some of you are young mothers. Jesus Christ. That's what the Lord said. Let not a child carry a child. You give us children when we have wisdom. 
a child carrying a child. Look at this child with a married man's child. They want to be twinning, fashioning with a child, going to salon, bleaching the child's hair, how wearing makeup on the expense of the married man. When the married man, the demon leave him, he wake up, he go back to his wife. Look at this child, Diana. She could be looking like a fool. And I have to say this one more time. My sisters, don't we love our children? Don't we love our children? Hmm? Don't we love our children? I love my children. Since I met God, I love my children. I love my children so much that I want to do better than my dad did for me. I'm telling you the truth. I love those three boys that the same way I suffered in my life. My dad had the chance to stop it. I have the same chance. I'm not about to play with grace. I love my children. I love my children that when I think of my children and the Lord is showing me, I look at it like, oh my God, I don't want these boys to ever beg. I don't want ever these boys to look out here like fools. I love my children. I love my sons. It's the best and greatest thing that God has ever given me. The best thing about me is my children. I love my sons. I love them more than makeup. I love them more than fake hair and more than fashion. I love them enough that even when people online who don't know why I have chosen to live for Jesus and go this route, make fun of me, insult me, torment me and do all of this rubbish. I love my children enough. Your, your, your chastising can never be enough. You are not even Jesus. The Lord, they chastise the one he loves. So this one you do, just be rubbish. And I just allow me to speak the righteous case out of my mouth. And because as an apostle, the way the Lord, eh, 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 he created me. I go fire you. I go fire you. I go fire you, period. Period. Remember Elisha? Elijah, Elisha. He would speak cases, eh? Mm hmm me, I'm the type, if your children play with me, God forbid you. You say, you see, you, you hear what I said, I love my children. But I do not mind though, to case the, the righteous case upon the dis, disobedience, moi, moi, and yeah, yeah. Make them quiet at one time. Tie all of them, no problem. I'm not afraid. Look at me and I'm not bitter. Try me. And those of you who are laughing, I pray that that demon will leave you. Because you know, the worst thing to do is the act demon. It the act. It takes you out of your reality. You are acting out here online. You are faking it. Jesus, have mercy on our children. Have mercy on our children because even Abraham and Sarah, they never came from riches. We read the Bible of how Abraham started nothing with that woman. And you gave them a state. If you did it for them, it's possible for me in my own. I will not be a fool. Hmm? I will not be a fool. And I will not live for this world. Hmm? I'm sorry. There is more to why God created me. And dress code was never one of them. Never. Why? How? It's impossible. You think God would, would prefer me to look slay queen, beat to perfection, and leave three boys in Europe <laughs> begging? And that's what a lot of you are doing. And that's why even when you ask for money from people, God knows. See how the devil makes some of you. You borrow money so you can go and finance your fake lifestyle. You put your husbands in debt so that you can go and facade your fake life. I will not be that type. 
I used to live a fake life before I met Jesus. I used to live like some of you. I didn't care about my children enough. I shopped and I shopped for them. But at the end, when I look at all those things that I got, not even the clothes is important of any value. That's why when I shop for my children now, I shop normal, humble. They don't need brands. I don't do Adidas, Nike, the way I used to do before. No, no, no. I don't. I don't. Because my children can have a house in future and they can make money to, to facilitate themselves to dress Nike if they want. My job is not to give my children Gucci, Louis Vuitton, or Nike. My job is to give my children Jesus Christ and teach them in the right way. Which means I have to start teaching them at this young age. Priority, order, making decisions that are going to bless them and not curse them. That's all. Period. That's what I need to give my children. Because in the kingdom of God, God will never ask my children, oh, are you like this? Did you wear Coco Chanel? Do you like Gucci? There will never be anything like that. Never. And that's why I know that the devil is a liar. The devil is sure a poor, big liar. And you see the little girls around the world. They know how to make up from the age of 15. They know how to do all these fake things for the world. But this young girl cannot cook, cannot cook water. She don't even know how to carry herself like a woman. Some of them know how to put makeup, but they cannot even clean the anyash very well. Sisters, what are we teaching them? Hmm? And comfortable with evil psycho patterns going in our family. Your father did not do well. You are fine with it. So your sister and your brother, they are all suffering. And all of you have just sort of become comfortable with poverty. Nobody wants to apply wisdom of Jesus Christ so that they can get better in their finances as well. Nothing like that. But you go to church. You live in a rental house with 12 pairs of suits that you change every day. And that's why they say dress up can make anybody to fake it. I could dress up and fake to all of you. I could come here and put a wig on and do all of that. But is that the point of, is that how you, you are going to meet Jesus? Hey? Is that how we are going to meet Jesus? Hmm? That's a lie. It has nothing to do with Jesus. All this facade that you are putting outside here. Come on. That's why I know that we are a generation of fools. You are so angry about your looks, but your children are still living in a rental house. What is better? Full of yourselves. Don't make me go deeper. Because now me, I don't deliver the message like a sugar coat. I go say it deep and it will prepare you. Because some of you, that's the situations you are in. Materialistic generation. They have taken all the materials, not for inheritance, but they have taken material for the external. They are blinging, shining, shining. You might even think, the way some of you look, you look like you are able to find something. It's why we get close. The Lord even knows. This person, they wear a suit every day. But this person doesn't even have a bank account. This person doesn't even know what savings account is. The God you serve is greater. He would have never set you up for failure. If the people of the world apply wisdom and become rich, you think God is happy that his children, we are always begging. Mm, 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 mm. A beggar who will remain a beggar. And a beggar cannot choose. A beggar is given leftover. It is up to you to wake up and say, in my family as Rachel Botha, I stand. I stand in the name of Jesus Christ to come against the evil spirit 
that has been poverty in my family line over and over because I do not need it. Devil, you are a liar. Poverty will not follow my children. If poverty was with me in my father's family, it stops right then and there and I cut it from here. God did not make us to be poor, to be beggars, to be sufferers. No, 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 no. If God could bless a woman who has never gone to school with no degree, you have degree for school. You are making salary six figure every month. Half of it is going to vanity. No, some of you think that life insurance is only for rich people. Mm. Life insurance is only for wealthy people. But life insurance is for everybody. That's why you find out in South Africa, people are killing families for life insurance. Anybody is capable of starting a life insurance for their family. And as people of God, it is our right to apply wisdom. We, the people of the world cannot have more wisdom than us. But look at us, the people of God. God giving us blessings and riches. All going to dressing up, to looking good. See how people, they think about looking good and fine and rubbish. -tick. But when we go to sleep, I pray that the conscience and the truth of the Lord shall keep ringing in those of us who are mothers who have put our children's so-called tuition fee, could be tuition fee, could be something to build a small business, a one-room apartment that in future, an apartment does not rotten, clothes and makeup rotten, vanity rotten, but an apartment, an investment, an insurance does not rotten. It comes back in seven folds again. If you build a house today, oh my God, 10 years from now, that house is going to be even more expensive than it was because times are changing. Economy is changing. Finances are changing every day. God is great. A house does not rotten. Even when you're hungry, nobody will know that you are hungry because your parents left you a house. That's why there are some girls. I know about their father. Their father was very intelligent. He knew that these girls are all going to be drunkards. He left them properties. They are drunkards, but at least they don't sleep on the street. They have a home where their father left it. A house doesn't rotten. A business can go up and down, but it doesn't rotate. Inheritance that God gives us don't rotate. It comes with wisdom and knowledge. Fashion, they come and go trends. And that's why you're, some of you, your banks, how many fashions have you tried just this year? Yes, and you're a woman of God. Every month, every season, when they say it's winter, we know you, some of you who have closets, Oh, tomorrow I'm opening my winter closet in a rent house, winter closet. And the women you are watching online here, yeah, experiencing their lives and loving their lives like idiots like this 24 seven. They have houses for their children. They've got things for their children and they use you to build inheritance for their families. Yes, if you are foolish, they will use you as their money making machine. A lot of you, you are poor, but I can tell you, you make money for your friends online here. You make money for us. Especially those who like foolishnesses. You, like, you make money for us. Uh, that's why the devil said, uh, let's go to make believe world. Now you can come online here in the night. There is AI. Hello, hello, hi, ice cream, rose, rose. I'm going to sneeze. Hench, hench. I see it. I said, okay. Dear friends, the devil, even the devil knows. He said, look, the idle mind. I don't want Pele, Java, Java, Pele, Java. Pele and Java are making money. Pele and Java are making money. And you are not on the same level. You are the awaker. Any woman who is useless, you shall be a waker of rubbish. Yes. Your rubbish shall be making money for other people. Ah, they vex so. Ah, ah. I'm sure that's why I hate that some of you. That's why they went to report my TikTok. They are TikTok here. Cheering Perry and Java. Perry and Java cashing into the bank. That's so. And their father said, and don't tell them that he set them up for failure. And that's why they are bringing a lot of things online here. Yes and yes. You watch Emanuela. Emanuela came with comedy here. Emanuela don't do that anymore. Emanuela no buy a house. Emanuela they buy a house, buy everything estate for her mama and papa. And then Emanuela is younger than you. And how many of you have watched Emanuela? You saw that one. This is not my real face. 
this is my real face. Even me, my sisters, I go use my name. His name is Como. Please, in Jesus' name, oh. just don't report my account. Oh. Make I collect my bread. Oh. If you are fool, let me correct my papa. Pom, 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 papa. Don't get angry. It's where you sit. We shall be sitting you there on the hook. Sit tight. You want to be a failure? Be a failure. But don't get angry when we call it out. Ah. Uh -uh. Look at your friends, wisdom and knowledge. And that's why some of you, my sisters, your dress code, head to toe, matching everything. What does it bring you? To trouble other people online here, to fool others who don't know the truth. <laughs> yeah. To make other people go and borrow money. Helping your friends to go and chastise husbands. And that's the another scene that has happened. She a church girl. Her husband don't make a lot of income. So she have a side man. This, this is not even men having side chick alone. Now women, married women, we have side man. That side man, they sponsor Brazilian here. He they sponsor acrylic nail. Woman. Hey, man. <laughs> For fashion, for fashion, yeah. Women have got sugar daddies, even abroad. Dear, the white girls they are called sugar babes. Sister Shah knows what I'm talking about. They date corporate men in high places, and the rule to date that man is the man they take you to restaurant, chic boutique. Imagine a body of a woman which is supposed to be more precious than ruby, fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God. It has become a money-making machine. When she sleeps on the bed, she collects income like that. And the sad thing is that they say sugar babes, they don't have sex with these men, but the men take them out for sure. You think a whole man is just going to have to love to sponsor a woman for $10,000 a week. You don't get any sex. Lie, lie. Lie, lie. But you know why all of that came? Because you see the way you bully me online here. You see how this world is really wicked and how Satan is evil. They blocked me, Rachel Botta, for preaching the truth, crying out to my sisters, God is speaking through me, saying you are leaving your children homeless and street kids because you are taking all your world to rubbish. They blocked me on TikTok, but Java and Pele, and the people who are doing pornography and sex on TikTok online, they are not blocked. You think who the devil want? The devil don't like me to talk like this. Mm -mm. The devil like where he has a lot of you. He like you sleeping, foolish, rubbish stick, dead, no wisdom, no knowledge. He like you like that and he's celebrating. Hmm? What kind of life? Hmm? And that's why every stupid thing that comes online here, same with TikTok, Facebook, they don't block them for you Africans. But they block for you people the knowledge that you need, the wisdom that you need, they block it for you people. Because the devil doesn't want you to prosper. He wants you and me to perish. It's up to you. My brothers and sisters, makeup, fake hair, dressing up is not of the kingdom of God. I didn't tell people to walk naked. I didn't stop people to look good. But the way it is going in the church right now, it is too thought of. It's too planned. It's too fake. It's too, it's like the, the, the Egyptians that were fighting with Moses. And at that expense of our children being left with nothing. There is no fund for a child in your home, for school fees or for medical expense if you have an emergency today. But there sure is a pocket for a woman in your home 
to go to a saloon every month to change hairstyles, to put nails and makeup. And it doesn't look like it's a lot of money, but if you count that money monthly to a year, how much money do you spend as a woman on vanity? And if you have everything, you have your children and all of that, houses established and all of that, then that money cannot be used to help out the poor because the God you save, even when Jesus could possess and carry all the riches of this world, he refused. He didn't take a Bentley. He took a donkey. Are you going to choose a Bentley or a donkey? You have the access to it. God will bless us as his children. But the blessings of the children of God are for the righteousness and the kingdom of God. They benefit the poor. They need, just like the gospel benefits everyone, the unborn believer and the one that has never even heard of Jesus before. And the one that knows Jesus, they benefit us. But what kinds of works are these? Looking good, it only benefits you. It doesn't transform anybody's life. And there is no way that I can transform you people by my dress code. If you have to transform people because of appearance, then the church has lost it. Because the old days, the way I know it, Jesus was sending them like madmen. They were wearing sackcloth. They were eating locusts. They were not dressed in chic things. And even me, I used to be of the world before I met Jesus. I can't, I'm not judging anybody. I'm talking from conviction and not to women of the world, to women in church. I didn't care at that point. But now that I have an encounter with Christ, there is something else that lives in me. I do not care. I do not care. I do not care about appearance. I do not care at all. Sister Sharon Brown, I do not care. I do not care to you taking care of myself is maybe makeup and all of that, Sister Sharon Brown. But does not mean that I don't take care of myself. It's like Lupita Nyong'o. You see Lupita Nyong'o on the red carpet with hair like this. You see Viola Davis. You see rich people with hairstyle like mine. And they dress expensive clothes. Why you don't tell them that they should take care of themselves? Sister Sharon Brown, don't insult me in Jesus' name. Next time you feel like insulting me, go and look at those babies you're having in the house and thank God for your children. Because even me as a mad, I thank God for my children. If the devil do anything or the devil send me to fight with people that I'm not supposed to fight with, it is not you who will suffer. It is my children who will suffer. So next time, Sister Sharon, before you speak, Sister Sharon Brown, not Sharon Idris, my love sis. Sister Sharon Brown, next time before you insult another woman about taking care of herself, my sister, look at those children. Because if you die, your children will remain alone. And it sounds bitter, but it's the truth. Keep yourselves alive. We see mothers dying untimely and an early age and planned death because they talk rubbish. Go and look at your children right now, Sister Sharon Brown, and thank the Lord for those children because I also thank the Lord for mine. So next time, my sisters, taking care of yourself. Nobody has stopped you people from taking care of yourself. If you are the type of woman who like to comb your hair natural, comb it, my sister. Moisturize it and comb it. If you are the type of woman who is like me, who likes your hair shaggy, and you're waiting for them to be made into dreads, praise the Lord. I'm making dreads, my sisters. Can't you see? I'm doing them every day, every night like that. Papa Kafira is feeling them. But be the way God created you. And do not listen to women like Sister Sharon Brown, because then they do not even have, they are beneath you. All that makeup and Jezebel spirit speaking out of her, it is nothing. If God wanted makeup on me, he would have also put it on me. And I'm not here to tell somebody that I'm saying what I feel. I came to speak what I was told. God is the one who stopped me from wearing makeup. God is the one who stopped me from dressing up. God is the one who told me to come out natural like this. And I keep telling people online here, 
I told the Holy Spirit, I said, they do not believe it. They think it's a choice that you can choose. But the Lord said he doesn't force it. That's why I remember. Look at down there. The name is who? Apostle Rachel Bode. God knew that Apostle Rachel Bode will listen. Sister Sharon Brown. That's why he's here. Don't ever insult people like me. You go cry the next morning. God don't like rubbishic women to speak to me, especially if you are beneath me. Don't allow that makeup to make you feel anything. If you're a woman who stands in makeup, you have no color back, standard, or level to ever talk back to me. Because you do not know grace, but it's given to you. So be humble, be meek, and stay in your place. Because it will get you punished with immediate effect. And this is not manipulation. God is coming with a vengeance and wrath. It's the fact that you think you can even stand up to the creations of God the way he has created them. Just like when they go to Salon, in the name of Jesus Christ, they look at a black woman, they say, oh, don't call natural like that. Do this, do that. God is angry. Just like I was subdued to become a woman of the world and fit in. I started doing makeup and all of that. When my whole life, I hated it. And even when I was taking part, it's because I wanted to fit in. I didn't want you people to bully me. But I don't care about people like you, Sister Sharon Brown. I've passed that level my whole life. I was being equipped for this ministry from the day that I was born. So if the Lord has fought to keep me unbleached, natural like this, and my whole body, there's nothing that has been messed up. Sister, apart from the three children that I carried in my total, devil cannot say anything. It's too far down the righteous path. Satan had better keep quiet. So to all of you, my African sisters, if you are natural like me, your hair comes out like this. Your skin tone is like this. It's not dirty, yo. It's not dirty. It's not dirty. And if a black woman like me is not putting on makeup like this and my hair is not comb, come and ask my sister, Sister Regina here, she'll tell you. This is a new hairstyle. People go to barber shop and clean their head like that. And they do twinkle, twinkle. Because some of us, we like our hair, it's mixed race. The white and black of my husband and me, they mix, you see it from the melatonin. Yes, so, and I've been doing it. It's, the hair is meant to be like this. That's why when you touch it, it don't drop. It's still standing. That's why when you do it like that, because that's how the Lord grow it out of my scalp. And then the last thing is, you women who are wearing makeup and vanity, shut up. Sister Sharon Brown, shut up. Just apologize to the Lord, not even to me. Shut up. Shut up. There is no woman with makeup who can ever say she's so anointed and stand up to a natural woman. Before God can fight for a woman with vanity, I am telling you, God will stand for a woman that he created in his image. And that's why when you look at the type of life and vanity you are living in, when a married man goes to cheat with a single woman, Usually the marriage is terminated. The man stays with a, a, a natural woman. And the woman with makeup, she wonders why the man stayed with a woman with natural hair. The woman with natural hair will even get favor before the presence of the Lord. You make God make other people's destinies possible for them because you are a fool. This makeup you are wearing, Sister Sharon, know your place, my sister. You, you keep quiet. That's your portion. You keep quiet. You shut that mouth. When Satan wants you to talk, shut up. Tell Satan next time. Say, don't put me in trouble with the Lord. Shut up. The talk of you fake vanity women is enough that it's already stinking in the church. Look at how pastor wives and people are naked. We have talked about it the whole day today. The reason why the Lord wants me to take seven days this whole week to talk about this is because the Lord wants you, devil, to know that your time has run out. God never made his children to look like brothels. They are temples, vessels for signs and wonders and miracles to manifest the power of his glory, his will, and his mightiness, not for sex. So when you see 
to all my single sisters out here, when you find Jezebel spirit attacking a natural sister like me, one of yours, you better not just pass. Remember to stand up and rebuke the devil. However you rebuke him, I don't care. Just make sure that you give him water, water, and pepper of the Holy Ghost by the blood of the Lamb. That's your job. Don't even give time to Satan to listen. You know why I cut Satan fast? It's never my job to listen to the devil. Me and the devil don't exchange words, just like the devil don't exchange words with my, miss, my maker and my Messiah. The devil doesn't exchange words with my God. And that's why I'm cut slick with him, period. And I mean it. And that's why I also insult him. Because I want to know, I want Satan to know that I'm insulting him. Who to you people who have demons in you that when we are rebuking them, you want to fight? It's not my fault that you have that demon in your life. Keep it there. You go receive what you deserve. If you come in the light of God, Holy Spirit speaks for you. If you come in the light of demons, demons are manifesting out of you. Sit in your lens, my sisters, and sit in the truth. But to every woman out here, the last thing I want to say, if God has given you grace, that you are able to afford to buy a Brazilian hair. Please, every time you go in the saloon, especially if you don't have a job, you're a full-time housewife. I want you to look at your children and I want you to know that your husband, there's no guarantee that he's going to be here forever because all of us have a bond date, bond date and death date. And all of us who die in Christ shall be resurrected again. My brothers and sisters, what I ask you in Jesus' name is when you go in that saloon, ask yourself, is it weak or my children? And if people laugh at you that you're like, Apostle Ada, you look mad, you are dirty, this and that. Is that more painful or leaving your children without a piece of land or business more painful? Which is which? Which is which, my sisters? And because of where we are going ahead, I said it yesterday, oil, maize meal, you might need to slow down on your budget for Brazilian hair. Because at a certain point, the people that have been giving you oil will not give you oil. You're going to have to make your own oil. You're going to have to learn to grow your own maize. I'm telling you the truth. And you're going to learn these children that we have how to use their hands to put things on the ground, to grow food, to fetch water. Because time will come. But because we are so much online, the devil wants you to be like an AI. Those who have wisdom, <laughs> I don't understand why my TV died. But I know that Jesus allowed for this TV to just go out and it's supposed to go back to the, because it's still with guarantee to, to be checked out. But the Holy Spirit keeps telling me, you don't need the TV. You do not know what God is protecting us from. Some of us, the TV takes our time. Facebook taking our time. make uping everything taking our time. You are missing the importance. Please do not be a foolish veggie. Don't come there with a, a whole jar where you put oil. Come with a jar filled with oil already. Because the Lord don't send no man to battle. He send no man to battle with empty hands. Lila, stop accusing Jesus. And those of you who are reporting my TikTok account, I'm telling you, TikTok, there is nothing that you can do. I have seen a lot of things on Facebook here. To be where I am right now, I'm telling you, you are just like mosquitoes making noise in the side of my head because I don't fight my own battles. God fights for me. Even Facebook, before Facebook could see whose daughter I was, a lot of things used to happen. Tell him more. Me, I said Jesus. And I can only tell you one thing. Go and report my page. If you, your appearance is important, my page shall remain blocked. But if the message that needs to come out of me is from the master and is for the whole generation, who can stop it? Some of you are full of yourself. The fact that you made five of you reported the page and you felt petty. In fact, all of you are on TikTok. Most of you, we feel sorry for you. You'll be AI. I cannot fight with AI. I switch AI off and I take the motherboard of the AI out and I shove it in the toilet and flush it. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, 
I'm going to see you people tomorrow. We are going to have first praise and worship, and then we are going to have more enlightenment through the word of God. And we're going to read about 19 scriptures tomorrow that we're going to go through so that we can have a guideline about dress code and all of that. And we're also going to talk about wisdom tomorrow, how you can change your lifestyle, change your lifestyle, your priority, and where your focus and your mind is. You don't have to be a billionaire to be rich, but God wants us to be comfortable. And everything that God gives you, he gives it to you so that you can multiply, especially us women. My sister, don't take advantage. Use the grace, especially when you're getting help. Sometimes there are seasons. Some of you know what I'm talking about. You are broke and then God just start bringing people. They're giving you, giving you, giving you. Use that money that they are giving you to, 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 to invest into something that will grow back. Whether it is a garden, a small shop, even water, my sister, even water, pure water on the street, tomato, vegetables, sell it. God will bless your hands work. He will multiply your hands work. That's the most important thing. You understand? Start making the right priorities. And every time you go to sleep, it is very easy if God has not yet convicted you to stop makeup. It is very easy when you go in the bedroom of your children, when you look at your living situation, when you look at your house, when you think of how much you are paying for rent, when you think of how much and close your eyes and imagine yourself, I am no longer in this world, I am dead and my children are left. Think of the family you have. Ask yourself, is this family that I have able to raise my children, educate them and help them when I'm not there? Ask yourself and if the answers are no, then your job is to make sure that you do right by these children. Don't expect the same people you don't trust to take care of them to come and do the work for you. I'm just giving you wisdom, heads up. And it is, I think children, makeup and children, they don't even sit on the same level. They don't. That I don't understand why people we choose that even me, I'm ashamed as I rebuke and speak I also rebuke and speak also for myself because I used to be in that life that I made decisions that almost got me and my husband bankrupt. Even when my husband was the only one working and I was not working, I was stuck in a life of vanity that I still wanted fashion. I still wanted makeup. I still wanted to do a lot of these things. And in the end, my brothers and sisters, I injured the father of my children because I put him in a lot of debt. I put him in a lot of debts. I put him in a bad predicament because I was not a partner that was thinking right. And most of the times men don't feel like they can confront us women and say, you know what, this is too much now. I had to learn it the hard way myself. And when I look at that man now, I do not want a man who works hard. This man works hard so that his children shall not beg, not for me to look cute. And for me and my African friends, the way we used to meet, to dress up, to eat, to eat, and talk about what we did. No. I don't want that. I want to be a proverb woman when God gave Abraham Sarah. Sarah was also a helper. Sarah brought in blessings too. She brought in wisdom. Abraham benefited from having a wife. I want my husband to benefit and I have to confess, the Lord allowed me to learn the hard way. I'm telling you, and now when I speak to you people, looking at all the expense and the things that I bought, when I look at the clothes, the shoes, the jewelry, I realize to myself, these things can never bring me anything back. And even if I had to sell them today second hand, I'll still not be able to get the money that I spent. If I spent $5,000, I'm probably going to get $1,005. It's still a loss. And then when I look at how much I have, I'm like, it does not even give my children nothing. Why did the devil gloat over me like that? Not anymore. Not anymore. I'm telling you the truth. Not anymore. Hmm? Not anymore, not anymore, not anymore. And there's somebody asking that God is the one who gives makeup talent. It's a lie. Makeup is not a talent. Anybody can learn to put makeup and master the art of putting makeup. Sister Chambi, don't play with me, my sister. Mwana wamai, tenga vigororo, perekere kuri satana, nakukanira. Nga umvera chinyanja mami. Tenga hii mfaka fere kutari, osa buwira fere pano mzina yon skrizi. Iseti sevi nga yesu, stifu na vaupo. Mwanuma pasila amai wa kurimu, pasa ule mamai wa nzapo. Osa sita vaupo wa vazipa. There is nothing like having a talent in makeup. It's a lie. Makeup is not a talent, neither is it a gift. Because anybody can learn how to put makeup on their face. It don't even come from God. God has given us hands. 
gifts and talent. I'm sorry, my sister. Even the people who do makeup artists, I've met a lot of makeup artists, especially when we're doing this series, Makeup and Fake Hair, who have come to me and told me that God stopped them from doing makeup. They never prospered. God gave them an amount of money and told them, get out of there. So my brothers and sisters, makeup chambi. Because when you come when you now say in your poor. But in the sister work, and most of one are post of the Lord, choke and a child chimos, and give him a condo cheat and Mazambians, Vonun, Kache, Vama Jindi, Vazi, but Mungama Konan, Mami, because Semini, Nimuina, and Wakun Nigeria come by, Sunga come upon a vaso, Sunga second upon a sick up Munga, who live a in Tako. So, my brothers and sisters, makeup is not a talent. It's not a talent. Neither is it a gift. The gift and talent that God has given us, we are able to share them amongst all men. They are free and they, anybody can receive and accept. Makeup is not a gift. Makeup is not a calling. Makeup is not a talent. It's a hobby. It is a man-made desire. Anybody can learn how to put makeup. The ones that have gone to school to study it professionally, they call them makeup artists because she knew that there's a bunch of generation who are gullible. They do not pay their children school fees, but every weekend they go to a personal hairdresser who personalizes makeup for them on their face. Makeup is not a gift. Makeup is not a calling. Don't mistake God for anything. You know what they call a gift, talent and calling? You see what I'm capable to do with them with the music. That's what the talent is. It's got no limit. It's only in his grace and it functions according to God. Not makeup. Stop lying to people. Because I see a lot of people want to bring in manipulation. I call it manipulation. Oh, my sister, man, what of those people who you think God gave other people talent for wasting money and resources? It can be a talent, something that you put on and in the same minute you can take water and do this and it come out. My God is an establisher of great estates and not rubbish. Makeup is rubbish, my sister. Stop comforting yourself now. Come on now. Something that you can take baby wipe, you remove. You're calling it talent. You see, my sister, it's very good that you spoke so that we can check you right. That's why I said when you come here, come and listen. If you don't agree with me, go and take it up with God. But if you do not want to listen, don't write rubbish here, talk up anyhow. Because we are laughing at you. Makeup is not a gift. Makeup is not a calling. And that's why when you look at companies that make makeup, you let me say something before I finish. If God is the one who allowed makeup to be, how many of you know that in makeup there's, there's human blood and baby penis for skin? How many of you, the products that are in your makeup? From the well under the water. How many of you know what you are using in your lipstick? How many of you will you, will you believe that in that lipstick that we put and anti-age, there is the foreskin, penis foreskin for babies. They cut it, grind it, and put it in the product. How many of you? I need some of you to get up today. Go and look at your makeup product. Go and see the ingredients and the things that go into makeup. Yeah, my sisters, you're going to see how much it contradicts God. It cannot be of God, mm -hmm. and it's not possible. What yes, my love. Placenta. Placenta. Every woman here abroad, when we give birth, they it's ask you, makeup. do you want my husband? Baby, can you say that again, please? Placenta is used in by most of every makeup because it has to do with are you uh, it has to do with the fact are you allergic to it or not. So even me, when God convicted me, he had to also make me go through the list of the things that I make up. I realized I cannot be putting, we say we hate child pedophilia, but people are putting baby peanuts in our lipstick. Out here. We are sucking baby peanuts with our lips. Why? Lie, lie. Go and get, go, 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 go get deep. Tomorrow we're going to take it even deeper in the Bible. My people perish because of lack of knowledge. That's why, sister, whoever is a makeup artist, I'm not here to finish your jobs, but God has given you people talents. There'll be a point where this life will not need makeup. 
We never needed makeup before. It became important now. There's a time coming makeup will not be needed. What are you going to do? God is great. Oh. If you have been a makeup artist, it means that he has given you a capital and the income. Take that income, go and start business farming, whatever it needs to be, whatever can be put on paper to generate income. A makeup artist will never have a pension. The real talent and jobs that God has given us, they give us things to sustain us for a long time. That's why if the job does not give you pension, ask yourself, did Jesus bless me with this? How can God give make you a makeup talent that there's no health insurance? A makeup artist cannot insure their self through their makeup. No, no, then you have to be a big company like Come on, go put placenta on my face. Now I realize that that's why when we are giving birth, they are coming to us asking you, do you want to give this or do you want to take it? Jesus help us. Please go and ask the Lord and get deep. I know truth is bitter. And I know that I'm going to get a lot of women against me. Do I care? The only thing that I'm asking here, in fact, let me just say to the Lord, Jehovah Nisi, Father, I am praying that everything they want to talk, they can insult, they can comment, they can write whatever they want. But Father, anybody that is going to be uh, uh, reporting my page for lies, <laughs> the same way they block my page. Now, so you go stop their right and way of life in Jesus' name. Any of you can do what you want, but going to report my page, that's a wrong move. That's a malice intention because if you want to report other people, you report people who you, you don't want to speak truth out in. Don't play with my page. I am telling you and I'm reporting you in the presence of the Lord. Find yourself. The same way you go behind, Satan allow you to go and report my pages. Now the same way the Lord will go behind, in front of you, I mean. Your husband shall also be blocked. Let's see, block the page. No income in your home, in Jesus' name. Collect it. Because we are out here to release our sisters out of bondage. Now, you people who are haters, who will not allow us. Anyway, brothers and sisters, this was it for today. And I know that a lot of you people are used to an apostle like this. But my sisters, Elijah was an apostle in his generation. Apostle Rachel Botta is called Apostle Rachel Botta by the Lord. And she come exactly like this with former bent lips and big lip like that. And she they look like that. She be pigeon English. If you don't like it, it's okay. But the message is what I came for here. What you think about me, like me or not, saying this and that about me, nothing, baby. I just want you to know something. Mm? Mm. Please, I just want you to know something. I don't care. I don't care it as long as I preach the gospel. You understand? And I'm not here to convict anybody, but to preach the undiluted. I'm telling you the truth, the undiluted truth. So my brothers and sisters, Go and see God deep. I'll see you people tomorrow by the will and the grace of God. We're going to have a long praise and worship. I pray that the weather is going to be good. We can do it outside so that we can also get deep. We're going to get deep in the word and even get deep with wisdom. And then we're also going to read the word of God. And then we are going to do Sunday. It's going to be extravagant. In fact, tomorrow in Saturday, we are going to pray. We are going to pray that God is going to set our priorities right. We are going to pray that God is going to give us the knowledge, the wisdom, and the grace for us to stand under the power of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, and abide under the shadow of the Almighty, that we are going to obey him, and that he's going to separate us from the things that are not of him, and also enlighten us, because everything that we take part in this world, if you do not know what meaning and cause it is, you might just be a guinea pig for darkness. You might just be a guinea pig for Satan. Satan enjoying to use you. You see the way he likes to use our sisters, their body for sex. Come on now. Hmm? Please, oh, let's just, let, come on now. Let's get deep and we need to be transformed. You cannot be with Jesus, you are remaining the same. So I'll see you people tomorrow, by the way, by the grace of God. Have a blessed night. Jesus love all of you. Yes, huh? Sister Sharon, let me, Sister Sharon, you see these Jezebel girls from TikTok. They go report my TikTok for nothing. <laughs> Sister Sharon, wait, let me see the inbox. I didn't see it. Which one is that, Sister Sharon? I blocked him already. I saw him. I saw him a long time ago, Sister Sharon. You see, mine at the Holy Spirit is the same spirit. I blocked him. I saw him. He insulted somebody even before. I blocked him before we were even halfway, sis. Don't worry, I blocked him. They carried a go already. I don't like men who insult sisters when the truth hates them. And you see how Satan is so weak. 
And that's why we chew people online here. You insult me when I rebuke you. You say I am insulting you. So you people can hear me insult, but you people cannot hear your, your own self. That's why me, I don't really care. I don't care about anybody who they, I'm not faking for anybody. Have a blessed night, my sisters. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. By his view and his grace. Yes, so. Isn't it, Sister Sharon Francine? They like to insult people. And then when you insult them, and, and you see Francine 